Hello creatives, welcome to Artist Star. My name is Beth and I am at the gallery today to do the New Moon Pick a Card series. Now this is about how Source will guide us as to what needs to be considered more deeply in order to enhance our creative energies around our artistic journeys. This is a new moon in Cancer that is peaking around 9.19 a.m. on the 9th of of June here on the East Coast in Maine. So check your calendars as to where it is in your neighborhood. So while you are letting your intuition guide you to pick a dish, one that is created by Judy Siegel and completely handmade from porcelain and Sagrafino ink that is calling to you, we have the geese, pile number one. We have the bunny rabbit, pile number two. And then we have the bird on the branch, pile number three. Well, there's actually two birds in that one, one just under the cloud. I know it's a little hard to see, so I'm gonna pick that one up so that you can see it a little better. So yeah, that bird's right there. And one on the branch, really beautiful. So fun, it's just this dark, delicious color ink not quite navy blue but not quite black it is just the, like the depth of the oceans really lovely okay so while you're looking and choosing I'll tell you a little bit about cancerians Cancerians are known for their depth of empathy and how they rely on their visionary abilities and intuition to guide them through all walks of life. They are organized, creative, self-sufficient, and as a cardinal sign, great initiators. The challenges for cancers can be about being overly sensitive and moody, kind of like the moon waxing and waning. The moon, as the ruling planet, is reflecting the sun's light. The sun represents self, so it's a reflection of the emotional self. The day of the week for Cancerians is Monday, which in the cards of truth are connections. The relating color for Cancerians is silver, and the relating chakra is the third eye. The chariot card is their card in the major arcana, and that is about the journey, the ambitions and confidence and drive to overcoming obstacles with sheer willpower. <laughs> I call it the rodeo card. It's like you are riding a wild bucking bronco like a champ, or not. <laughs> and just because of all the nines around this new moon, the nine relates in numerology to compassion and servitude. So overall, use your intuition to make connections with your skills and talents that reflect you and consider how they are serving the greater good. Like what kind of beauty or thought does your work provoke? What would someone want to live with in order to purchase it and bring it home and keep that feeling around them. So, okay, if you need to, you can pause now and if you need a little more time. Otherwise, I'm going to stop and move on to pile number one. Okay, pile number one, you got the waning moon the failure card from the soul's journey. This is the moonology, the soul's journey. You got the nine of hearts from the cards of truth. And then we're going to clarify with the Lenormand cards as to the detail of things. So the waning card, this talks about it being well, actually, exactly the time that you are watching this, if you're watching it as soon as I post it, because we are just a few days away from that new moon. So it's perfect timing. It says, what do you need to release? Because it's coming awfully close to that beginning the begin again. So it's 
about being in that in-between stage where you've just completed something and it took all of your energy and now it's time to let that that energy go organically into the compost of art <laughs> and creative energies to burst again from the soil to something that is coming around on the new moon. So, okay, how are you supposed to wrap your brain around that, right? It's suggesting that it's, uh, yeah, it's just a time for you to go easier. It's the autumn and winter of the cycle. So what do you need to release? What are you done with? Okay, so then the failure card. This really isn't about failure. This is about understanding that a mistake is only an opportunity to learn, right? So of course, we all know that, but to at times it's easy to get caught up in the minutiae and lose sight of that bigger picture. So yeah, it's harder to let something go when you're frustrated by it. But you know, if you've got the waning moon card here and you know you're in the in-between, the failure card is just that in-between bits of letting something that's not working for you go right to meditate and to sit in the quiet to you know fold your hands in your lap maybe sit on them <laughs> i don't know what works for you <laughs> and think about grounding and letting that opportunity for something new to start again to emerge from the soil as I was just saying about the moon card it is what you do with failures right you reap what you can from them let what doesn't work go and yeah move on to try something new some kind of experiment or exploration for something it is a time to just feel the earth and get really fertile around the whole thing. So, okay, um, yeah, embrace the maxim that when one door opens, I mean, one door closes, another one opens. So, right, you are just closing one door and time to open another. So it's right in that, that middle. So revel in the knowingness that everything will reveal itself when it is meant to. No matter what, be true to your dream and your creative process, and you'll find it. Okay, so we're going to move on to the Cards of Truth card. This is the Nine of Hearts, which is an incredible card for you to get here because it is all about that K2 energy. It embodies the water element, which is cancer, which is that around this moon. And it is also the wish fulfilled card. It is the wish fulfilled through charity, okay? So in order to receive, you need to give. Now giving can mean anything. If it's time to let something go, right, that we were talking about already, then let something go and have it be a gift to yourself. This is also about manifestations and the conscious or the unconscious manifestations because nines are about conclusions of preconceived ideas. Now these are ideas of the heart suit. So it's surrendering with tolerance regardless, right, of all the preconceived connotations of situations of the divine plan. Oh, so hard to sit in the in-between, <laughs> but it is seeing those preconceived emotions that, you know, those that are so ready to be there at the whenever you're feeling failure or struggling with figuring something out and you just need to leave it leave it alone and walk away take a walk around the block or through the woods go sit for a minute under a tree and come back to it when you can 
let some of that energy go because in a spread like this, it is the nine of hearts is time to accept a conclusion of a situation for what it is, okay? Manifestation is at its highest vibration with the nines. There is no changing it. It is out of your power now. So it's time to find the tolerance and understanding for self, that reflection of the moon for self. And even though this is the new moon, it is that sliver of that that you know to be your truth, okay? So for better or worse, it's time to surrender to the divine plan. All right, so that is the nines, and it's also the fool energy. The, that is the major arcana card that it is relates to the red suits and the nines. So yeah, that is looking at things with that childlike curiosity. So that is really a good place to accept that, you know, kids, they don't care, they'll just scrunch something up and toss it or grab a fresh sheet of paper and get going again. <laughs> I don't think they see anything as a failure. <laughs> so embody that and wait, get through that in between stage, enjoy it, actually enjoy it because how often do you just get a time out? Yeah, sounds, sounds pretty nice to me. So I think you're going to be able to do this because you got the birch rod that is all about knowing what to sweep away, out, out, out. And then you got the lucky clover card. And then you got the fish that is an abundance, an abundance of whatever it is you are seeking. And in this case, creative energy, right? Around enhancing your experience and your journey. So I hope this uh, resonates and that you're empowered by it. And good luck with your meditations around this new moon and whatever it is you're letting go. I love it. All right. Thanks for watching. And as always, happy creating. Okay, pile number two with the bunny rabbit dish. You've got a very interesting read here. It is pretty exciting if you like change. <laughs> it's all about you being ready for something brand new. So perfect for a new moon beginning. So you got the North Node here in the Moonology deck. This is about stepping out of your comfort zone and being ready to begin something brand new for yourself. It is your destiny. This card is ur urging you to dare to do something different with your life and your direction, to take action. So are you willing to follow through and lead the life you incarnated to live? If you finally find the courage to make the leap, there's a good chance you'll come to ask yourself, why did I wait so long, right? So it is about facing your fear and getting over it. It's time to stop obsessing about someone or something and to stand on your own two feet and to know that it's ready, you are ready, and that you've got this. It is kind of a fun card if you are looking to head into a different direction that from the rest of the cards that I'll get to in a minute, I know that you are feeling it. You have felt this for a bit of time now and you know that you're ready to do it. It's just finding the way. So Source is here and ready to help you with that. A little or a lot, there's a lot of free will here to um, start the begin and do it your way. So the honesty card, you know, is about honesty, right? It's about the honesty within yourself, of course, that that is really the only absolute truthful place that you can be, right? Is when you are addressing yourself. So it talks about being 
present authentically with yourself and only can do this by being yourself. So yeah, okay, that's a big one. Growing into a new, more defined, unique you, right? It's got to start with the honesty there. So yeah, I mean, when you're talking around some other people or you know, oftentimes will need to tell little white lies or small untruths in order to be kind or generous. But when it comes to yourself, that you can't do. You got to be brutally honest with yourself. It's the only way to go in your creative because if it if you don't then your creativity, the art that you produce is not authentic either. So it's really got to come from that solid, grounded, you knowing you. All right. All right. So let's move on to the cards of truth. You got the seven of hearts. This is all about transformation. It is one of the gateway cards. They call it the gateway card, the sevens, because it is that seventh day of the week Saturday with Saturn before you get into the Rahu and Ketu and the ecliptic. So it is your last day of the week card and it is a pretty big leap to get from the sevens to the eights, nines, and tens. It's a whole different ball game up there and seven is a very big test card. It's the death card energy in the cards of truth. It's of Saturn, as Saturday I was saying. It's also water energy, like the Cancer around this new moon. And it's about emotional connections and being challenged with having something long lasting in order to experience a real transformation of the heart head connection. It's an emotional heartache. It's like losing your favorite teddy bear, right? I mean, if you ever lost a favorite toy when you were a child, you know how much hurt that is. But then, you know, you grow up a little bit and you find something different that you've outgrown the teddy bear and there you are. So the the real key here to the sevens is to stay out of the victimization mode the poor me, you know, oh boo hoo, I lost my teddy bear and I'm never ever going to get over it. You know? So that may be true, but you know, you do need to be honest with yourself and know that it's not the end of the world. It is just a piece of it, that big piece of it that you need in order to transform into something that's going to be really amazing you, right? A bigger, better, brighter you. So what you're aiming for is that um, staying in the in-between mode of the, or out of the three modes of victim, perpetrator, and protector, those three, because that's ego talking when you feel you have to defend something or protect something or that you're you're shattered by something. Um, that's ego. And where you want to be is in your soul. Soul doesn't have a time or doesn't really understand that in that sense. They, it is a loss, but it is also something that you can move on from. So yeah, that is what it is about the sevens. So okay, so look for your lessons to self validate. That's where you want to head and to learn through this process of this, um, this transformation, if you will, it is a test of the emotions. And it's clear that you are going to be able to do it. The uh, one of the keys is to that honesty bit. So yep, get in that mode of um, doing for others and that 
what is your art going to say about you? What do you want your art to embody? What would you hope for someone to purchase and take home, right? To live with that you could create. So there you are. All right. So yeah, and the, the clarifying cards pretty much back that up. The cross is more about having a cross to bear. So it's been a burden and you know that it's become a burden and it's time to let it go because now it's kind of biting you in the ass like a snake, right? The self-deception, if you will, is now going to be shed like a skin and you are going to emerge all the better for it. It talks about the garden and the garden is a place of community and where you feel safe and can explore and experiment with this new persona that you are ready to take on. So yeah, I'd look around, see what is out there for you. There are groups and people and uh, places that you can get that comfort of exploration. Wow, that's pretty exciting for you. Okay, so I hope this resonates and I hope it gave you something to think about for this new moon meditation, how to morph into a more beautiful you. And yeah, so thank you for watching and as always, happy creating. Okay, pile number three with the little bird plate. We have for the Moonology card, the full moon in Scorpio. And for the soul's journey card, we have empathy. And the cards of truth, we have the 10 of hearts, the popularity card. And then we are going to clarify that with the Lenormans. So for the full moon in Scorpio, this is about knowing it's time to release the negativity right? That full moon negativity. Full moons are intense. Scorpio sign is intense. It is all about those little deaths of knowing what to hang on to, but to move on and transform into something better. The more you, right? You as an authentic, creative, unique being. So there's only one way to do it, and that is be completely honest with yourself and to release that negativity because if you're feeling negative around a person, place, or thing, you're hanging on and spending a lot of creative energy that could be spent somewhere more positive and put to better use than having that dark feeling around something. It doesn't do any good. So yeah, even though you may be right about your suspicions and holding the grudge may be, you know, something that you feel completely right to do, it doesn't mean that you have to forget. It only means that you have to forgive. So learn your lesson and move on and just know that you're not going to go down that path again, not in the same situation at the same circumstances. You'll be faced with other more bigger um, uh, challenges, but if you learn your lessons from this one, then you'll be able to move on in a much better way. And once you shed that negativity, then you're going to be able to come into this empathy for yourself and for other people. It's a beautiful place to make art from because you want art that is going to be meaningful and rich to someone, so including yourself. So it's got to be a true reflection of you. And the only way that you can do that is through complete honesty with yourself and to let go what you have no control over, what is sapping you more than giving to you so that you can find that empathy to move on and have a, a better creative journey. 
So yeah, the empathy card is all about knowing how we are all sparks of the divine and that your purpose here is to be on that, that path of love and exerting your free will for the betterment. So yeah, stay out of the judgment, stay out of that um, critical, judgmental bits and stay in the mode of just taking care of you. And once you can forgive, even though you might not want to forget, right? That's okay. You can find a cleaner, brighter, more beautiful place to become that 10 of hearts. Oh, this is such a great card for an artist. This is the popularity card. It's also the ecliptic card. It is your path that you're on. So it's also represents a wheel of fortune. So it's that wheel coming around and around, knowing that, you know, all life has its seasons. And right now it's a season of letting something that is hurting you go in order to make room for something much brighter to come into your life really nice card here. This is like love prevailing. It's water energy like the Cancer Moon and it's also knowing uh, that you have a need to learn patience on this path of love but it's an ample opportunity to sort out that ego self and find your soul purpose. It's very passionate very heart-led fulfillment. So it's supported emotionally, right? By your self-validation, you knowing yourself so well that that fulfillment is yours. It's really a beautiful card. Tens are also about whatever you give, you receive in like kind right? Receiving greater rewards for your greater efforts. Beautiful. All right. So that is also um, thinking if there's anything else that the tens represent, but I think that pretty much calls it right there. It is you being incredibly compassionate and compatible with an opportunity to grow and become this really beautiful being and make the commitment to it, right? You've got the lock and key here. So you have every, every tool that you need in order to do this, this coffin, letting go, letting something be buried and put in the past. Start a clean slate, just bury it, right? Whatever hard feelings or whatever doesn't really feel quite right that you know is time because it's been holding you back and time to move into this brighter, lighter space and really get anchored in it because that anchor is going to be the new, beautiful, bright, happy, clean, and sensitive, empathetic, popular <laughs> you. <laughs> I love it. All right, well, I hope this resonates in part, at least gives you something to think about. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and happy creating.